This is the DG-808S sailplane, and I have it banked slightly to the right. It's climbing in a thermal updraft near Corcoran, California. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, the current altitude is about 7,400 feet, and I'm nearing the top of the updraft, but the glider is about to turn back in and start climbing again. The wind is slowly pushing me away from the thermal. Let me straighten out a bit and we'll fly back into the thermal. There, it's starting to climb. This is a really wonderful aftermarket glider and it's free to download. I actually like this one better than the gliders that come with the game. Um, it's got more features. Uh, it's got uh, two different modes of autopilot, either bank hold or heading hold. And uh, to climb in these thermals, what I'm actually using is bank hold. You set a bank angle and it will simply hold that bank angle. This particular thermal that I'm in has an updraft of about 6 meters per second and it tops out at about 16,300 feet. So in effect I could keep this glider climbing to at least 16 or 17,000 feet from which point I could exit the thermal and probably fly well over a hundred miles in flat terrain before I would have to find another thermal. There, I'm going to let it start banking again because it's still in bank hold and we're now about in the center of the thermal and we're now climbing through 8,100 feet and our vertical speed is 530 feet per second. Now let's have a look at the instrument panel. Um, alt zero. And looking at the voreometer, the red needle shows what's happening with the air mass. The blue needle is what the sailplane itself is doing in terms of its vertical speed. Um, but the, the red needle shows that the air mass itself is rising, uh, not exactly evenly, but between 500 and 1,000 feet per minute. And the glider is maintaining a steady a uh, little over 500 feet per minute. Um, we're flying at about 90 knots with 17% negative trim. The autopilot is maintaining, it's attempting to maintain the glider in a stable level flight, but because we're flying through a rapidly rising air mass, this thermal updraft, it's having to use a lot of down trim to keep the aircraft stable. Um, we're now, we just passed through 9,000 feet and looking at the voreometer again, um, you can see that we have a total energy, which is the, the, the energy of the rising air mass lifting the aircraft at about 7.8 meters per second total. Um, the little black and white um, display that you see slowly crawling counterclockwise around the dial, I'm pointing at it with the mouse cursor right now, that shows the direction of the apparent wind. Um, in addition to the thermal updraft, there is uh, a horizontal wind component that's moving uh, at about 
See, there's a wind indication somewhere. Um, I believe the wind was running at about five or six miles per hour. So, let me show you what the inside of this glider looks like. Um, the yellow is the tow rope release. The blue is the, the blue lever there is the speed brakes. This is the flaps lever. These two over here on the right are for dumping water ballast. Um, these two are for raising or ejecting the canopy. Um, I accidentally bumped this lever in flight yesterday and the wind tore the canopy right off the aircraft. Didn't crash it. It kept flying, but it was really strange to fly the glider with no canopy. And then this instrument here is to connect and send commands to the Kinetic Assistant app. For instance, to request a tow plane or a winch connection to relaunch. Um, let's see the there's the control stick. I can turn it on and off here. And there is a 150 pound thrust jet engine built into this glider. The controls for that jet engine are right there. Um, I'm not using the engine much because I've loaded up the game with lots of thermal updrafts. Um, I could fly this plane right now from San Francisco all the way into Colorado, clear across the Great Basin. I've populated uh, the entire western United States with 1,500 thermal updrafts that extend all the way uh, from Mexico up into southern Canada and from California to the Great Plains in Colorado. Um, I could fly the glider almost indefinitely and never need to ask for another tow, uh, just flying in the updrafts. This glider is very maneuverable. It's got very a very nice instrument layout. And um, as you can see, here, let me, let me take it out of autopilot and maneuver it a little bit for you. Okay, it's now out of autopilot. You can see the trim has gone back to neutral. The beeping that you hear is the voreometer. Uh, whenever the aircraft is rising, it goes beep, 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 beep. beep. If it begins to sink, the, the beeping turns into a steady tone that's like ooh, and that the I'm going to fly out of this thermal there you heard the tone of the voreometer change there that meant that that for a moment the plane was sinking instead of rising flying toward the southwestern edge of the, um, of the thermal. I've set up the weather to be scattered clouds in two layers. Uh, there's a ground layer below me that you can see, and up around 18,000 feet, there's about a 3,000 foot thick high cirrus layer above me. There. We're, we're now out of the thermal, and you can hear the voreometer doing that steady tone which tells the pilot that you're sinking. So this is pretty much what the, even though this is a simulation, this is what California's Central Valley looks like from 
11,000 feet, it's just a patchwork of farm fields and roads and little towns here and there, little farming communities of, you know, a couple of hundred houses, a general store, a gas station. Um, this per the particular livery that the glider is in is British, so the entire aircraft is painted fire engine red, and it's got a British flag on the fuselage uh, back by the tail. Uh, this model also comes with uh, a, uh, a Swiss livery. The aircraft is just bone white. Uh, there's a Russian livery, which is a, a, red, a red and blue paint job. And then there's an Australian livery, which is uh, the entire aircraft is painted in browns and greens, uh, uh, a very uh, uh, kind of hard to look at kind of livery because it's uh, almost like camouflage. Um, so. Let, I'm going to release the stick and let the aircraft find its own uh, its own happy space. Um, the ballast tanks, I believe, are empty. Let me check that. Oh no, we do have ballast. Uh, let me dump let me dump this ballast. Go down here. All right, we're now dumping ballast, and if I look back at the wing, we should be able to see, oops, hmm, yeah, you can see the British rondelle back up by the tail. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be dumping ballast water, but I don't see it. That's interesting. Oh, is that it? Oh, yes. I guess we're, we're uh, if you caught a glimpse of that grayish cloud, that was the ballast water being dumped. And let's see. Uh, yes. Uh, the CG, okay, I guess the only the wing ballast dumps, uh, the, the two that say one pound each, the internal fuselage ballast apparently cannot be dumped with these levers. Oh, uh, there's an oxygen cylinder right there. Um, this doesn't actually function, but in the real glider, uh, if you're flying above 14,000 feet, you would use either a mask or a nasal cannula and you'd breathe oxygen. And supposedly there's enough oxygen in that cylinder for four or five hours at 18,000 feet. All right, well, um, thank you for flying uh, Air Laura Ann today. And... Um, Hope everybody is having a good Monday. End of recording.